Good day, you Moto students. So for this week's module, we will talk about the history of Philippine arts. So basically, we will talk about the different artworks during the ancient times. Tapos, we will talk about the civilization during those times, different artworks in certain kinds of societies. Okay, so let's continue. Or just a meme. Alright, so the question would be, was there art before colonization? Okay, if that is one of your questions on top of your head, this is the answer. Yes, there is, but not as an expression of an individual. So, tingnan natin why there is an, um, a kind of work or artwork before colonization or what kind of artworks are they? Everyday expressions were all integrated within rituals that marked significant moments in a community's life. Okay, so back then, during the ancient times, there are already rituals that are being exercised and made by Filipinos. Okay, during the ancient times, rituals are already being made. Okay, so let's see during the pre-conquest period, uh, hunter-gatherer society, pag sinabi nating hunter-gatherer society, they are nomads. And when we say nomads, they are homeless. Okay, they are homeless. They are just um, making their way to have some foods, to gather foods. Kaya nga hunter and gatherer, yung goal lang nila sa buhay is to survive. Okay, kumuha ng pagkain, mabuhay, and that's it. Alright, so ano connection niya sa artwork mamaya? Tingnan natin. So, how it all started, meaning to say, during the ancient times, ito kasi yung pinakamatandang society, okay? So, if you could remember your SSO1, the oldest society would be the hunter-gatherer society. Before, uh, bago pa tong post-industrial society. Okay? So, anyway, we have literature na. Nung panahon na yun, during the hunter-gatherer society, lit literature already exists. In what way? Let's see. When they told stories about their hunt, this form of oral storytelling marked the beginning of literature. Their literature back then may not be as beautiful as we have today or as beautiful literature as we have today, but then they is, this, that is considered already as literature. Okay, Oral storytelling, so whatever those stories might be. Theater or play acting, so ito, this is one form of storytelling or the theater arts that they are performing back then. During the hunter-gatherer society, ayan, they mimic the movements of animals, even ayan, they, they play something or they dance something. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, back then, nakikita na natin yung presence ng theater or play acting. Okay? It is not new to the hunter and gatherer society. When they imitated animal movements that they hunted, this marked the early beginnings of theater or play acting. So, as I have mentioned, they are mimicking the animals that they are hunting, diba? Sabi nga natin, during the hunter-gatherer society, they hunt for foods, for animals, diba? Given natin yan. And they mimic yung animals na kung anumang animals yun na nakikita nila dati. Okay, so that is the beginning of theater or play acting. Okay, so this is somehow familiar to you. We have the Manunggol Jar. So, another artwork din yan during those hunter and uh, gatherer societies. We also have this Kanyao, or Kanyao, in Tagalog nga yan, Kanyao. The ritual dance performed during native feasts or celebrations in the highlands of the Cordilleras in the Luzon area of the Philippines. So, ito, ritual dance siya, no? Ibig sabihin, ano siya, pag sinabi kasi natin ritual na during, uh, sa mga cordillerans, something na solemn, okay? Na hindi natin basa-basa pinagtatawanan or, or minimimik or ginagawa meme, ginagawa joke, etc. No, this is something na solemn na they give very high importance to, okay? And another is, dito sa kanyaw, medyo hubad. Kung hindi man hubad, may skin na pinapakita itong mga katutubo natin sa Cordilleras, no? Pero, sa society nila, hindi yun pambabastos, okay? When a woman is um, is not wearing anything from top to toe, kung man yan, ganyan, 
or labas yung dibdib, whatsoever, hindi yun bastos para sa kanila. Kasi society lang naman talaga yung nagdidikta kung bastos yung isang bagay. But for them, for the Cordillerans, this is a form of an art. Alright? Next, we have the Islamic Colonia. So, 13th century to the present. Let's see. So, yan. Um, older societies pa rin ito. What are the main beliefs of Islam that influence the ways art is made and interpreted? So, let's try to answer this one. We have this kind of art, tawid. Okay? So, hindi siya tawid, no? Tawid. Doctrine or belief that emphasizes the impermanence of nature and the greatness of divine being. And it negates materiality. So, dito sa tawid, ano siya? Pag sinabi nating doktrina, di ba, nakasulat siya or set of beliefs, ganyan. Set of beliefs siya na ina-emphasize natin na we have this nature and we should bow our heads down to the nature. Okay? We should give importance to nature and we are under the nature. Kaya nga meron tayong tinatawag din na greatness of divine being. So, dito pa lang nagsisimula na yung religion. No? Dito pa lang nakikita na natin na we are looking up to someone na mas mataas talaga sa atin. That's why we refer him or her as divine being. Whatever those religion we are exercising right now, this all started with this one, Tawid. In the Philippine culture, ha? In the Philippine religion. Islamic art in relation to Tawid. So, we have interior mosques. Elaborate abstract patterns of relief. So, makikita naman natin, very detailed, very... Ang tag dito? Complicated but still very detailed yung mga patterns na ginagawa ng mga Muslims, no? Sa mga simbahan nila, sa mga establishments, etc. So, yung purpose, to draw attention away from humans and nature. Okay? So, it has a purpose. It is not something as um, designed as such lang for wala lang, no? It has a purpose. Yan, to contemplate the divine, para i-honor yung divine being natin, the divine spirit, whoever he or she might be for some other religions, to compel the believer to engage in mental concentration. Also, to have, alam niyo yan, para ma- ma-capture yung attention ng iba for them to have a mental concentration. Alright? Yan. Islamic art in relation to Tawid. So, we have Mirhab, or niche, and Qibla, or yung wall are oriented towards the West. So, hindi lang naman sila eh. Actually, kahit naman Christianity or INCs or whatever religion, we are performing different kinds of rituals. We have different set of beliefs, di ba? And for them, itong mga design na to, it means something for them. No? It is not merely an art, but it means so much for their society, specifically for their religion. Dome? tells us about how the order of universe is imagined. So, kita nyo yung dome dito sa picture, yun yung gold. No? And even itong buong ito nga. Tells us about how the order of the universe is imagined, di ba? We imagine the universe as something na out of our reach. No? Out of our reach, tapos forever, di ba? Ganyan, universe talaga siya. Yung, uh, yung perception natin of what universe is, ganun din for others, no? For, for the ancient Filipinos. Release, uh, relates to all levels of cosmic experience. So, when we say cosmic, ayan, so sa galaxies, um, yun, di ba, magkakakonect naman yun. The octagonal base symbolizes the spirit. Okay, kaya nga siya octagon, ibig sabihin niya para strong yung foundation. No, or yung spirit ng, ng religion na to, ng Islam. The four-sided main base refers to the earth or material world. Okay? So, yung sa 8 na yun, sa octagonal base na yun, yung four-sided main base nun, material world, or yung material natin na tinatawag. Material aspects of our lives, or sa lives ng mga Islam, at least. Alright. Islamic forms are inclined to a project, uh, to project, sorry, to project, grow, or to have an upward orientation to symbolize regard for heaven and to veer material earth. Okay? So, itong bahay na nakikita nyo dito would be torogan. We call it as torogan, derived from the word torog, which means sleep. Diba? Torog. Ay, somehow, near naman siya sa tulog. No? As our language has prospered through time. Ayan. So, doon na, na, na sabi natin na tulog or we're sleeping. No? Ibig sabihin lang, anyway, ibig sabihin lang, itong artwork na to, yung torogan na to, ba? It seems like a bahay kubo siya. 
kung sa atin, kung sa ating mga Tagalog. It seems na bahay kubo siya, but then, tingnan nyo, meron siya mga designs pa rin dito sa corners or dun sa mga walls. Kasi very particular itong mga Islam sa mga designs, di ba? Nabanggit natin na they have purpose. Or these designs have purpose. Why do they uh, make it? Or why do they still incorporate it in everything? Okay, dito sa Tarogan, ang ibig sabihin lang yan, upward orientation. Kasi they are looking up to someone, di ba? There is a divine being and dapat upward yung, upward yung orientation natin. And it, it also means reaching for heavens. Something like that. And we also have this one, Sari Manok. I hope you are familiar with this. Or you have already encountered this in your early years. So, yan, Sari Manok, another artwork, artwork from, from the Mindanao. Okay, so yan. Um, joke lang to. Yan, Torog. Mga memes lang yan. Okay. Then, we have the Spanish colonial period. Or the 1521 to 1898. During the Spanish colonial period, so ito na, no? Um, sa mga influencers, ito talaga yung, uh, I mean, sa mga colonizers, ito talaga yung malaki yung influence sa mga Pilipino. Yan, the colonizers used art as a tool to, number one, propagate the Catholic faith through beautiful images. Diba, totoo naman, among the Catholic, or the Catholic Church, ganyan, There are a lot of different beautiful images in their church, no? Physically, and dami talaga mga murals, paintings, um, sa mga santo and santa, even the songs that are being um, sung during a holy mass, ganyan, they are generally beautiful. And ito mga colonizers nito, for them, art is a tool. Pagkakataon na para, para i-capture ang attention nito mga Pilipino for them to embrace uh, ito uh, Christianity, ba? Diba? Para para mapalaganap ang Katolisismo sa bansang ito, we have to use art para ma-attract yung attention nila or maging attracted sila sa atin. Ganyan. Then, explain concepts behind Catholicism. So, as I have mentioned, yung cross, it has um, meaning for the Catholics. Especially kapag Pasko, no? Tinan nyo, September na, ba diba? So, ang dami ng mga Christmas decors nating makikita somewhere. Mga Christmas songs we hear anywhere. ba diba? So, it has meanings for the Catholics. And hindi lang kapag Pasko, kapag Semana Santa, kapag mm, feast day of their saints, etc. So, they have meanings. And third, to tell stories of Christ's life and passion. So, ito nga na sabi ko nga, Christ's life and passion. So, during Christmas, during Semana Santa, there are different kinds of artworks that we see that sometimes we are just neglecting or taking for granted. Ganyan. Art forms during the Spanish regime. So, we have religious arts, Dolan Christian art, folk art. So, isa-isahin naman natin yan. Churches, so yan, style, baroque. Um, there are a lot of beautiful churches in the Philippines, and that's undeniable. No? Um, Taal Basilica, Seragusin Church, Manila Cathedral, etc. And hindi lang itong malalaking church, marami mga maliliit na church na, or mga chapels na maganda rin yung mga designs, or yung interior designs, yung architecture niya, etc. Uh, ito ang baro, characterized by grandeur, drama, and elaborate details. So, as we can see, ang dami niyang details, ba? Diba? And kapag titingnan mo siya sa malayo, very elegant yung pagkakatayo niya or pagkaka, pagkaka-project ng design. Extensive use of decoration and ornamentation. And European-inspired also. ba? Diba? Yan. So, a lot of decors, deco stones, bricks, etc. And yung mga pinakamatatandang church, kita nyo, may mga similarities eh, ba diba? Sa mga matatandang churches dito sa Pilipinas, there are a lot of similarities among those churches. Yan, sa inside church, yan, trompe l'oeil, French for fooling the eye, or optical illusion natin tinatawag, ba diba? When we say optical illusion, sometimes we are being um, fooled by the design. Kanyan. So, there are a lot of Um, these kinds of design in the Philippine churches or the Catholic churches. Ayan, sa Taal Basilica to, kung nakapasok na kayo doon. Um, these are photos from Sir Belisario. 
But I have the photos of it. Hindi ko na lang nalagay dyan. Sana makarating kayo dyan and tingnan nyo yung may ceiling niya or yung area dun sa yan, sa taas nga yan. Makikita nyo yung magagandang designs. Yan. Tal Basilica of St. Martin de Tours. Yan. Um, nirenovate na siya ngayon. Nung last time na pumunta ako, o oh, maikwento ko na lang din, 2019, nire-renovate siya eh, yung sa may unahan. I just don't know kung ano nang itsura nga ngayon. Anyway, so yan, inside churches din, retalbo or in decorative altar niche. So, madami, yung mga altar nga natin, iba't iba pa yung design, ba? Diba? Nakadepende nga dun syempre sa mga priests or sa mga namumuno ng simbahan, mga leaders of the church, depende sa kanila how their altar would look like. No? Yan. Via Crucis, Way of the Cross, depicts Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. So, we, kung ano tayo, kung observant tayo mga tao, we could see that there is always a Via Crucis in every church. And they are portrayed in one way or another. Ano? Makikita natin images, Um, can be statues, ba? Diba? But still, there is a via crucis in every church. Now, let's go to performance art. We have four here, but hindi lang siya limited to these. First, passion. I hope you are familiar with this one. Biblical narration of Christ, passion, chanted in improvised melody. So, when we say passion, something na pinagpe-pray, no? Kaya nga siya passion, parang ipinagdarasal, yun ang nangyayari kay Christ. Or, and, pakanta, ano? Pakanta yung pag-design. Pakanta yung pag-design dun sa, ano, sa, sa, sa dasal. Oo, oh, yun. Tapos, we have this, Sarsuela, also. Operata, which features singing and dancing with a prose dialogue. So, yung Zarzuela naman, yan, minsan, it is written as Zarzuela. Yan, Operata, which features singing and dancing with a prose dialogue. So, we could see people singing and dancing, tapos may mga dialogues, and even it has stories. No, I hope nakakita na kayo or nakapanood man lang kayo ng Zarzuela during, um, ano nga, yung Semana Santa. Senakulo naman, dramatic presentation depicting the passion of Christ. Meaning, itong senakulo, ito yung nangyayari kapag parang tinetieter act or inaact yung pagkamatay ni Christ. Which is somehow debatable na nga nowadays. Yung ipapako sa krus, like ipapako talaga, ba? Diba? Hindi siya joke eh. No? Yung iba pinapapako talaga nila yung palms nila sa cross. With some reasons, na parang panata na daw nila to, um, this is my religious devotion to Christ, etc., etc. So, that is Senakulo. Then, next we have Comedia, or colorful theatrical tradition that describes the conflicts between the Muslims and the Christians. So, itong Comedia na to, parang sa theater naman to, ano, parang ang clash lang naman dito ay between the Muslims and Christians. Music and literature, we have this Doctrina Christiana, please remember. The first printed book in the Philippines compiling song lyrics, commandments, sacraments, and other catechical materials. So, ito, um, Doctrina Christiana, para siyang a book of beliefs, okay? Of religious beliefs that we should adhere to. Alright, so yun, yun yung, doc, yun yung first literature na na, na na expose sa atin, or printed literature, or book. Kung di man naman, ito, alam naman natin na to, traditional Filipino love song, or yung kung di man. Hindi yung kanta ng Silent Sanctuary, yes, it is. Alam ko may mga mag-iisip sa inyo ng ganyan, but generally, kung di man is traditional Filipino love songs. And paintings, so napakarami nating different kinds of Paintings all over the Philippine archipelago, be it in the ancient times or during the present times, we have a lot of this. Ayan, usually uses Shizokuro, interplay of light and dark and their contrast. So, we have different uh, colors or designs that are being portrayed by this one. Landscapes can be still life and genre were popular choices. So, it can be another also. Yan. American colonial period to the post-war republic. Let's see. 1898 to 1940, 1946 to 1969. 
So, paintings pa rin. We have different kinds of paintings nga. And, ang famous dyan, yan, si Fernando Amor Solo. Inclination towards still life, portrait and genre still persisted. And, um, um, favorite na genre ni Fabian de la Rosa and even Fernando Amor Solo would be life. Okay, women, life, nature, yung something na realistic or yung nakikita nila, um, in real life, no? Kung ano man yung society or environment nila during those times. And, ayan, sabi ko nga, si Fabian de la Rosa, naturalist paintings, yung ano niya, yung favorite niya, depiction of realistic objects in a natural setting. Ayan, so samples of his artworks. Ayan, Fernando Marsalo, ayan din, mga classical art, uh, arts through paintings. And, Fernando Marsala is a Filipino first national artist. So, in rural life, yan, ganun yung favorite niya. Tingnan niyo yung nasa paintings. Very rural, no? Very baryotic. Parang ganun. Yan, favorite niya. Women, children, fruits, rice, uh, farmers, mga ganyan. Performance art. So, yan, vaudeville or vaudeville from France. Became popular in 1920s until Japanese regime. So, yan. Um, pag sinabi natin, Boda Bill, collection na siya ng lahat ng theater acts na pwedeng gawin ng mga tao. Motley collection of slapstick. It can be a song, dances, acrobats, comedy, cars, girl, and stand-up comic arts. And, ayan nga, parang theater art siya na pinagsama-sama na talaga lahat. May comedy, dance, um... Mga role plays can be, yan, ganyan, skits. Yun yung Bodabil. But, as time progressed, napalta na siya ng mga film. Kasi, syempre, pag natuto na itong mga tao na we can edit this one, or we can include this one, etc., etc., napaltan siya ng film. Ang difference would be, a Bodabil, live siya, live performance, yung film, of course, pre-recorded naman siya. Architecture. Neoclassic architecture, it is characterized by grandeur of scale, simplicity of geometric forms. Okay, so we have a lot of um, architectural structures in the Philippine settings. And um, primarily, ano siya, um, inspired by neoclassic architecture. So, examples are these ones. Sculptures and the very famous oblation of UP. Okay, so Armor Solis counterpart in sculpture. So, in Oblation and Bonifacio Monument. So, parehas siyang kay Guillermo Tolentino. Ayan, mga different sculptures lang naman to. Okay, so the question is, what were the changes brought about by American colonization? So, ayan, nasabi na nga natin. How are they different from the religious forms of the Spanish colonial period? Diba, pag Spanish, um, pinapa-embrace talaga nila sa mga Filipinos yung um, Catholicism through arts. And, of course, change is coming. Diba? Alam naman natin na societies change, time evolves, and even arts, it also changes. Okay, we have the modern arts. So, Philippine art in the modern era, it has evolved into a wide variety of, of expressions and medium turning the country into a situation of creative upheavals. Modern Filipino artists have more freedom to explore in his own. So, kagaya nung ginawa niyong task for the previous activity, di ba? Ang sinabi natin, or your, your understanding of contemporary arts, then, dapat mag-reflect yung something na na ikaw, di ba? Or a part of you. Ganyan. So, ganun din yung sa, sa modern art or Philippine in the modern arts. Parang ine-edit natin lahat, nire-revise natin lahat, but still it is considered as an art. Contemporary art yung tawag natin doon. Yung mga nauna, yung mga nabanggit natin kanina, we consider them as classical arts. Itong ngayon, contemporary na siya. But still, Philippine arts pa rin. Ayan, their style is from cross-cultural exposures in the eastern and western world, yet they have not forgotten their Filipino roots. Kasi nga, ba? Nagahalo-halo yung mga cultures natin, European cultures, Spanish cultures, American culture, Philippine culture, ba? They are being mixed together in a cultural melting pot. Um, for example, the Philippines is a wide cultural melting pot. And itong mga arts na to, nagahalo-halo na din. What 
either are the origins of these arts, etc. And so, Victorio Edades, modern art movement, and influence team from his art studies in U.S. Ano lang siya, example ng um, contemporary artist. So, his kind of work would they be this, the builders. Okay, and yan, another artworks pa rin. Alright, neorealism, abstraction, and other modern styles. So, when we say neorealism, art that exposes the true social conditions, shapes, and colors of daily life. So, kumbaga, what you see is what you get. When we say neorealism, from the word itself, real. Diba? And when we say real, ito yung totoo. Okay, so kung na nakikita mo, we can predict, or we can, we can develop this as an art. Okay, so yun yung neorealism. Abstraction and other modern art styles. So when we say abstract, diba? It is somehow familiar to us. We have different forms, colors, lines, space, flatness of canvas, etc. Minsan nga, ano eh, parang abstract, diba? When we say abstract, it could be a reflection of someone's feelings. No? Kapag medyo light yung colors, bright yung colors, masaya yung colors, or pastels, ganyan, or the painter showed pastel colors, we can depict that the artist is happy or in a good mood. However, when the artist used dark colors like black, gray, brown, or its shades, we can say that the artist has gloomy feelings towards something. Diba? Or he or she is undergoing something. So, yun, nakikita natin, and it could be a reflection of the artist. Roberta Chavet, so, yan, flux artist. Ano lang naman, um, example lang siya ng Filipino contemporary artist. So, yan, father of Philippine conceptual art. So, yun naman yung inintroduce niya in the Philippine setting or in the Philippine arts. We have conceptual arts. So, ito yan. Ayan lang. Ito, ito nasa picture. Opened up one white cube sites for art exhibitions and performance spaces. Para lang sa kanya, um, you can use something or different materials for you to produce a concept. Kaya nga siya concept art. Whatever those concepts might be. Okay? Depending nga sa artist. In yung inintroduce ni um, nito, ni Roberta Chavet. Social realism naman, it emerged during the intense of, fol- of political ferment of the 70s and 80s. So, it is um, rooted on the protest arts, protest, political um, issues that are being undergone or during those times by the Philippines. Yeah, protest art that exposed the social, political issues and struggles of the times. So, yan yung nasa baba nga. Um, Itak sa puso ni Mang Juan yan. And conscious with disregard for the oppressed and underrepresented masses. So, sa social realism, unlike neorealism that only reflects the everyday lives of people, dito sa social realism, it is somehow revolutionary. Okay? It is somehow rooted on the politics, on societies, issues like corruptions, like... Um, incompetence of the government, etc. Okay? So, social realism yun. And that's it. Okay? So, that's it for our module 2. If you have questions, clarifications, or anything, you are free to send me a message. Alright? Then, I'll see you next module. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching this video.